All right, Booker. So we're at the Shelby County Extension Office here yeah. at the Agri Center. Right? right. This is the turf plot. We want folks to know to check with your local extension office. They may have a turf plot too for you right. to come yeah. out and see the type of grasses that grow well in their area. Mm -hmm. Right. So we want to talk about the different lawn options uh, that we have here in the Mid South. You know, we have a different zone <laughs> than everybody else, right? So yeah, 7B, 8A. Mm -hmm. So again, we're going to talk about the grasses that grow best in our area. But before we do that, why do we plant certain grasses in our area anyway? Right, in, in 2015, we decided to put in a turf plot. Okay. We got people who are curious about growing grass in the, in the landscape. And I hear we got three different types of grass. We got Bermuda grass, we got okay. Zorda grass, and I've got some blue grass in here. Now you want to pick a grass based on your house. You got a lot of shade or you got right. a, lot of, a lot of sun. Now, fescue grass will grow in a lot of shade area. And we do have some zoysia grass that will grow in a uh, little shade. Okay. But Bermuda grass needs full sun to grow. Full sun? Full sun. You're not going right. to grow in a tree. You got a tree or something like that, it's going to probably going to die on you over okay. a period of time. Okay. So, yeah, we put in 10. And before we put any types of grass on here, we had our soil tested. Right. And most grass out here need a soil between 6.0 and 6.5. Okay. Mm -hmm. Always important to get that soil tested, right? So you can get the grasses off to a good start. You get the grasses off to a good start. Make sure they get a good start out there. You want to do that because if you start off with a bad and not testing the soil, it might start off for a while, but it's going to eventually <laughs> die on you in there. Okay. But we put in timber right out here. Do you want to take a look at them? Hey, let's take a look. This is latitude Bermuda grass okay. here now. It's been in here since 2015. You look at it, it's doing great in here. And you, know, you don't see no hollow eye disease in here. Mm -hmm. This is one of the grass that reduced a lot of spring dead spot. But this grass required good drainage. It was developed in Oklahoma State. Oh, wow. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, the color's dark green. Almost probably will come out, out of dormancy kind of first. Uh, the fall color is very good. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, you know, sometimes you, you see different types of grass in the fall, had a different light brown, dark brown. This have a really pretty color to it in there. The wear resistant very good in this grass here that you have. Drought tolerance very good. At the morning, about two to two and a half inches tall. Very good grass. This is Tohoma 31. Okay. And this, we just put this out here in 2019. Hmm. It's really good here. And that's the grass. And this is grass you want to grass in your landscape that you want to cut a lot. <laughs> this okay. grass can grow kind of fast here now. Right. It really you got, you got very good wear resistance on there. Because you can walk on it, play on it, and everything just come, kind of bounce back because it grows so fast here. The color is dark green. But the fall color is uh, very good. Wear, wear tolerance is very good here. The shade is fair. Dry tolerance is very good on this grass here. The height between two to two and a half inches tall. Now, during the summertime, you get real hot, you might want to raise just, just, a, little, just a little high because of uh, the protect those root system. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's a good grass here. You got to go ahead and try and look at it. All right. Mm -hmm. All right, Booker. So, yeah, what grass is growing in this plot? This is North Bridge here now. Okay. This is another fast growing grass. It's a very Dark green, a little darker than the other grass that we have out there. It's spring green up is very good on the spring green up on here. Uh, need a little fertilizer on this grass here. Uh, wear tolerance is very good also. So that's why they, a lot of times you see a lot of people use this on, on uh, when they got like sports field. So he grow well. A lot, a lot of disease resistant on this grass here too. You want to try that. And a lot of homeowners look for less disease problem. And this be one that you want to try here in your landscape. Right. Yeah, it's pretty thick too. It real thick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, Booker, what grass do we have here? This is bluegrass, HG, HGT, the Health Growth Technology. Okay. You'll see it grow real good in the fall. It's probably start out in September and it start growing and looking real pretty out here. Oh, that's fine. And normally be the only thing growing. This is a good grass here. Uh, it grow well in, in the full sun. The heat tolerance is very good. Okay. And this grass here now is out here in the fields. It needs a lot of water. But you want to use a lot of water, you want to make sure you have good drainage now. It might get a little insect like beer bug on, they might get on this grass here. Okay, have good uh, disease resistance and all that kind of good well, stuff? Well, sometimes you might get a little disease on there, like brown okay. patch. You might get a little on there, but it's be okay. You, you can treat that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so this plot actually has two different types of grasses two in it, right? Type of grass. We, we okay. try some different grasses in it. Really, it's celebration, but move the grass in here. Okay. But we're trying to do a special thing on this grass right here. We're trying to find out can you get two grass to grow in one? <laughs> okay. we're, doing, we're doing something for like the pro football field. Mm -hmm. We got Blue, blue grass and mixed in with this here. Okay. We sold blue grass in your product about three years ago, and it's doing real good. And that's why we're doing that because in the fall of the year, you had the blue grass coming through when the Bermuda grass go dormant. Oh, nice. So you want to try to oversee with another kind of rye grass or nothing like this here. Okay. And you look at the grass, it got a dark blue color. Mm -hmm. How we did on the old seed once in with the, with the blue grass, okay. but it's doing good here now. And I will mention this uh, this, again, you know, this plot. We're always experimenting, right? So yes, that's, yes, that's, that's why we have plots like this. We just experiment. There's a right. spearmint that I know, you know, and you might not want to try it in your landscape in here, right. but there's a spearmint here right. that we're doing here for the, for the profession. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you.
This is our F1 Zorgia grass here, Chris. Okay. You look at it, this grass don't have a light green color to it. Not a dark green grass like a lot of grass, but it's a light green grass here. Yeah. Now you you only now you feel it. This is a thick grass. <laughs> and, and, it, and it's very good on heat resistant. Okay. Which we need in this area. We need right? in this area. Yeah. That is very yeah. good on here and everything. And it go dormant kind of, go dormant kind of fast now. The heat tolerance is very good. The wear tolerance is very good also. It need a little water on there to, to do well. There's usually a lot of questions about fertilizing Zorgia grasses, so. The one thing about fertilizing zorga, you don't want to fertilize it too early. You don't want to fertilize them too early in the, in the year. You want to start off fertilizing probably like in the first of June. You don't want to fertilize your zorga grass. You don't want, especially with a nitrogen fertilizer. And that's all your zorga grass in. But this F1 zorga here, this light green color in there, do real good into your landscape. This is a solo zorga grass here now. And the now, this probably grass like you now. <laughs> this grass don't grow fast. Don't grow fast. No, you don't want you like that morning in your yard, probably about once a week or even a week and a half or so. This probably what you want into your landscape oh, yeah, here. Good. The color's dark green. Uh, fall color is very good. Wear resistance very good. Uh, drought time is very good. The morning high between two and a half to three inches tall. You keep your water when it needed. It'll do good for you. And, and, and it'll do good for you. All but right. it's so low zoysia grass here. And it grows slow. Grows slow. They really yeah. want them. I guess why it's nine. Yeah, so low zoysia grass. But you would like this in your landscape too. Right. I think All I can right. handle that. All right, Brooker. So what grass spot is this? The geo zoysia grass okay. here. Now, you know, they, they, they have a very thin blade on there. Mm -hmm. It's also kind of thick, too, now. Oh, it is thick. And, and they grass in there, it's not, it not the best now, but it will do good <laughs> in just a little shade. Not, not a lot of shade, but just a little shade. Okay. The color is dark green. Wear resistant, very good. Every night, might get little chink books on there. Shade tolerance is fair. Drought tolerance is very good. And But one thing about this is all great. It will get a little thatch built up every now and then. Uh, it might be aerated sometime every now and then. So. so we have to be concerned about the morning height? Yeah, morning height, keep it the right, right, right height, you know, two and a half to three inches tall in there. That's good. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. This is our raw zoysia here now. You, you hear a lot of people that have, they want a zoysia grass. Yes. But they want, they want, they have trees. Mm -hmm. And this, this grass here will do good in probably about four hours of sun. It'll do good in a little shade and everything in there. But you need to make sure you keep, keep water on it. But you want to keep it as, about, at least probably about three inches tall as you can in there to do be better to protect those roots. Also, the color is dark green. The morning height between two and a half to three inches tall. Drought tolerance is very good. Uh, the wear resistance is very good on this grass right here. But it's a, it's a really good grass in, in, in there. And another thing about this raw zone, you might just want to keep it, it use a little more nitrogen and fertilizer than a lot of your other grasses that you have. But it will do good for you, you know, in, in there. Okay. And it, it, it perform well. But it would do good. You got a tree or something, you got shade. You might want to try this raw zoysia. Okay. This is our palisade. Okay. This, this, is, this is a really good grass in oh, there. Oh, I like palisade. If, if homeowner want, want a zoysia yeah. grass in there, <laughs> good in shade, at least four hours of sun a day, you need that, and that'd be really good on, on that. Uh, the color is medium green, morning high between two and a half to three inches tall. C cold time is very good. I like if it. I go with a zoysia grass, that'd be what I put in my landscape. All right, so again, good shade tolerance. Good shade tolerance, and everything. Just like the roar, good shade tolerance. Okay. Any mm -hmm. diseases we need to be worried well, about? Well, I haven't seen any disease on the hill now, but it do, it do, it do get some disease. But it's been out here since 2015, and no disease been on this hill. But okay. it will probably will get disease if you don't, if you don't take care of it right. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we like palisade, right? I like palisade myself. All right. Mm -hmm. So all of this was started by sod. So when is the best time to sod here in the Mid-South? Because you can sod grass any time. Okay. Most as long as the soil is not frozen, you don't want to do it then. All right. But you don't sod grass, you need to get the site ready to sod. Okay. You, you, you want, maybe want to work it up some and get it ready to lay down sod on there. But once you sod it, you might want to add a little water to it and try to get it to catch on to that in there. If you do it in the hot summertime, you might want to water before you lay the sod down for the grass is not too hot on the root system. Mm, okay. But you can sod any time of the year you want to do that, as long as the soil is not frozen. And we want folks to know that this is actually irrigated. This is irrigated here now, yeah. Is we just make sure we get an inch of water a week on here. Okay. And we get the water that now, you let it soak down real good in there, and we get an inch of water a week in there. But long as no standing water. Okay. You don't see no water standing nowhere, so you want to make sure you got good All right. irrigation. All right. Well, thank you again, Mr. Booker. This all looks good. We, we know you love your grasses. Man, thank you, too. Right, and everything. So this is just appreciate for you, right? you doing this for us. Appreciate that. All right. Thank Let you. the homeowners know they can come out here and look at it any time they want anytime. to and, and everything. They got a question by it, they can give us a call. All right. Sounds good. Thank you much. All right. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please click the subscribe button below.